Good morning everyone, it's a cleaning day today and I want to share with you my eco-friendly, sustainable, low waste products that I use to clean my home. I usually do this on a Sunday, it's Monday today, but I wanted to share it with you and film it. So we're doing this today and I'm going to do a nice good old clean around the house and show you some of the things that I use. I do have a blog post which I'll leave linked below and I also have a video that I made a few years ago with more information on ingredients and how to make your own homemade cleaning products because I'm definitely a true believer in we do not need the crazy amounts of cleaning products that we're promoted to buy. There are no, there's no reason to need different cleaners for different rooms and having, you know, loads and loads of different versions of things and be constantly making everything <laughs> so spotless that there are no germs anywhere. Germs are actually good in lots of ways for us to be exposed to, but it's also important to keep your house clean. It's like a healthy balance and I think Maybe in recent years, I've noticed this kind of hyper obsession with everything being absolutely spotlessly clean and antibacterial and there being no germs and mess anywhere. And that is not needed. You don't need to have a perfect home that is immaculately clean all the time and every single surface is antibacterial five times a day. You're going to survive. <laughs> Um, if you are looking to start with homemade cleaning products, there are a few essentials that I'd recommend you get. You probably already have them in your home. Vinegar is one. It's going to be used in so many different products. I use it in so many different ways. Washing up liquid or dish soap and bicarbonate of soda. If you've got those three things in your home, then it will go a really long way to make your own homemade cleaning products and do a lot of cleaning. So I'm going to start in the kitchen. I'm gonna wipe down the surfaces, do a bit of tidying up, and I'm gonna polish the windows up and I'll show you what I use for my window cleaner. So this cleaner is something that I think Alex picked up in the shops, it's definitely not a homemade product, but when we got our quartz worktops put in, we wanted something that would work with the quartz worktops, and I wasn't sure if my own homemade stuff would cause any damage. I'm 99% certain that it wouldn't, but Alex got this and I thought that's kind of a nice idea because this is for granite and marble. It's from Method, it's plant-based, and I just decant it into my own spray bottle. And a quick hack, I took the actual spray nozzle from the Method Cleaner because sometimes when you buy these um, glass spray bottles, the spray attachment on the top isn't very good and it doesn't work with the product you put in there. I don't know why that is, but sometimes it just ends up being um, not how it should be and not working effectively. So I often do this if I prefer the spray attachment from the bottle originally, put it on here and then I chop the plastic tube and it looks really nice on your surface. It doesn't, I mean, this looks nice too, but <laughs> I just thought this looked good and I can use this for so many different cleaners. When this one runs out, I'm probably gonna do a bit of research. And actually, I'd love to hear from you if you know what products are okay to use on quartz. If vinegar is okay, then I'll go ahead and probably just refill this with vinegar. But this does smell really, really lovely. So I'm gonna spray all the surfaces down and give a good wipe up, put some things away, and we'll get the kitchen clean. The spider! Ah. I have a few things in my kitchen that I see as essentials that are eco-friendly. So I don't buy any plastic sponges anymore. All the sponges I buy are compostable. This is a brand called Seep. They are cellulose sponges with a loofah scourer. They're free from plastic. I can put them in the compost. They're made from renewable sources. It all comes in this uh, cardboard packaging, which means I'm not throwing away sponges all the time. I also use wooden brushes and these are the sort of kind that you can change the top, so you just take the thing, you just take the thing off. I'm not gonna do it because it's kind of tricky. And then you buy a replaceable sponge and then the top isn't plastic, so it's far more sustainable. I've also got some other little scourers for different sorts of cleaning and I just store them next to the sink. And I'll link some below if you wanna get your hands on these. They're really handy for different purposes like getting inside. This is really nice. I think this is from a coconut and this is great at scraping pots and you don't have to worry about it scratching anything because it's not, wire wool or anything which can scratch off any ceramic surfaces which is 
really important with my nice pans that I use. And then this one is my Riverford brush that I think they gave to us when I made my first delivery and I use this to clean all of my vegetables. These ones are great for getting in bottles and things like that and it just means that all of my cleaning products are plastic free. On the side of the sink I've got these bottles, these are all from Kushi I think, which is a Cornish brand. Dishes, hands and then this is the Bauer Collective moisturising hand cream. I refill these either with Bauer Collective pouches and I adore these. I love them. You basically order them online. They come with a pre-paid envelope and then you return the packaging when you're finished to be recycled. We often use these as well to go top up at a local zero waste shop and get whatever we need, whether it's hand wash, laundry detergent, washing up liquid, that kind of thing. Hopefully where you live, there might be somewhere that does refills, even for just basics. I remember back in the day when there wasn't as many refill places, there was one that did washing up liquid and hand soap at the very least. And we like to do that so we don't have to be using loads of plastic and getting that hard plastic from the supermarket and the products we're using are all eco-friendly plant-based as well so definitely recommend anything i mentioned i'll leave linked down below for you i also love the brand delphis this is their antibacterial hand soap everything they do is eco-friendly and yeah love their stuff another thing that i actually think is quite important that when i used to live with americans at university they thought was weird i don't know whether it was the specific americans i lived with or whether this is a british thing please let me know in the comments if you have one of these in your sink but we have a little tub in the sink so you reduce water when you're washing up rather than having the tap running the entire time when you're washing up you fill this up however far you need like then i just did a pot i didn't really fill it up very far because i was only washing up one thing and it means that you're not wasting water so definitely get yourself one of these if you don't already, it just saves so much. This is a bottle that we refilled with some Bauer Collective multi-purpose or kitchen cleaner. We use this for the sink. I don't use this on the surfaces. I use the granite worktop stuff on the surfaces, but it's great to have something like this. Um, in an ideal world, I'd probably try and get a nice glass bottle for this, but this is working fine. I'll use this until it breaks um, and snaps and then I'll maybe get a nicer one, but I just store this underneath because we only use it for the sink. So it's not on display. Not that it matters. I'm just particular. <laughs> about dishwashers is that they actually sometimes save less water than doing the washing up it obviously depends how you wash up and how you use your dishwasher we use both we're mindful about both we just make sure that it's completely full before we turn it on and we also use the eco setting and switch it down to one hour rather than three which is a really useful way of saving energy saving time and saving water the dishes always come out just as clean as if you were to do a more intensive wash This device is the best thing ever. It's a steam mop 
and I highly recommend that you get one if you have floors that need mopping regularly. We've got slate all downstairs and wood, so I want to be really delicate with them. And it uses so much less water. So you plug it in, kind of like a hoover, you fill up the water tank, which is really small, it's just there. And last time I did fill it all the way up and it only used half. And I just put a couple drops of essential oil on the little mats. You refill these each time. So you attach it on here and then you just throw them in the washing machine. So each time you have nice clean things and you just use so much water, it takes so little time to dry. I find that it definitely cleans the floors better. And because it's steam, it's completely antibacterial. So it's getting all of the dirt off. And I'm quite precious about the wood floors, especially. I don't want to be putting loads of water on them because they have oil and I just think it's much more gentle to be using a steam mop so we're going to give this a go plus it's just really fun <laughs> I'll leave a link to this below I think it's a shark is that what it is yeah shark so I just put a couple drops of essential oil I'm using frankincense nothing too crazy because we do have pets It now smells so good in here. And look, all the dirt that came up on both sides. I just flipped the sides when I moved to the wood. If you can see loads of bits on our slate tiles, that's not dirt, it's um, paint. So I think at some point the ceilings have been painted and they've splattered on the slate. And unless we went round with a little, with our, with our nails chipping off every bit of paint, uh, that's forever gonna be there. So. We've got old slate tiles, they always look a bit grubby. All the dirt's come off that could come off, and this is very satisfying. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Alex is in charge of laundry. I don't do the laundry in this house, do I? Uh, I think you did it once. <laughs> We've got a lovely Samsung washing machine. Show them the best part about it. Uh, the sock drawer. Which was, oh, yeah, I like that. So if you forget something, go and pop it open. You can pop something in the front. We love this washing machine. I use that about half the time. I always forget something. Yeah, like Alex uses it all the time. But do you want to show what products you use for the washing machine? They're up in this cupboard, aren't they? They're not very eco-friendly. This one? Method. Method. It's nearly finished. Lavender. I think every one we get is lavender. I love lavender. lavender. That's Bauer Collective. That's the refill stuff. That's fabric conditioner. This one is also lavender, which I got ages ago and I've just been refilling it mainly with these. Yeah, and, and also the place in Hale. Yeah, well that's since we got these, I haven't been going to that place because you'd have to drive then. Yeah. But I like that place in Hale. I'll Can't leave a link remember. to it below. I think it's in the foundry Can't remember the building. Name, but yeah. I want to bring up, if you have cleaning products in your home, this was here when we moved in. There was a few different products around the house when yeah. we moved in. I'm not going to throw this out because that is wasteful. If you have products already, if your family have products, use them up and then after that, go with um, more natural products. Or if you really don't want to be using chemicals that you don't like in your home, give them to somebody. There will be someone who will need them, maybe a student, post them on Facebook. At least it's cruelty free. Yeah, this is cruelty free. It's nothing wrong with these things. If you know, you're on a budget, maybe you like these kind of products. Just if you want to get rid of them, give them to somebody, post it on Facebook Marketplace, like I said, someone will want it um, or just use it up. We're keeping this because if we have a stain, we can just spray that on there. Ignore the cat food, but do you have any tips for eco-friendly laundry? What uh, setting do you do? I usually, it depends. There's so many settings on this thing. Uh, eco. If I, I'm not sure, I don't use that much because it's like a three hour wash and 40 to 60 degrees, which I think is too much. Mm -hmm. So I'd either do it on cotton, do like 30, yep. or sometimes if there's not much, I do shirts mm -hmm. because that's a shorter wash. I mean, maybe eco, I'm sure they know what they're doing. They don't use All the water. animals. <laughs> as soon as you're in here, they want food. Oh my gosh. Hello. Go on, give them this food. Come on then. I read something like the most energy from the wash is the temperature of the water. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. In the bathroom, I like to keep it simple. I like to use one spray for everything. So I don't need to use a separate mirror spray, shower spray, toilet spray, etc. I just use my own bathroom spray, which is just half vinegar, half water, 
with a little bit of essential oils in there and that does the job. The great thing about this is I can use this on the mirrors and the shower screen, polish them up and then use them on all the other surfaces. If you want to get a little bit extra bang for your buck, you can put some washing up liquid in here as well. I sometimes do that, but definitely not necessary. If you want like it to foam up basically, if you have a surface, maybe like your sink area, which gets a little bit dirtier and you want it to be a bit more, you know, scrub it up a bit, then you can put some washing up liquid in there or go downstairs, get a sponge and just put a bit of washing up liquid on a sponge. Totally fine. For the toilet, I've got this like galvanized tub with a wooden brush rather than a plastic toilet brush. I find those really unsanitary. So I much prefer this. And this is purely used for cleaning the bathroom at the end of the week and it works really well. In terms of the little scrubbers, I have this which works great on tiles or on the shower floor. It just really gets in there and scrubs everything out. What I like to do is spray the shower first and then leave it to sort of soak and then I can use this if I need to. And then this rag I will use across the whole bathroom first and I'll do the toilet last and then I'll put it in the washing machine because then it is clean every single time I use it and there's no germs or gross stuff and that's pretty much it oh yeah i also recommend these if you want to use a product ocean saver power cleaning eco drops you just pop these in the bottle fill it up with water and you've got yourself a bathroom cleaner without having to buy a new one each time we do also have the ecovert toilet cleaner not necessary you don't need it but if you want something in your bathroom that does smell nice sometimes it's nice to at least have a toilet cleaner alex wants this and likes to have this i personally probably wouldn't bother a really great way to clean your toilet without buying any product like that is vinegar, bicarb of soda, and some essential oils to make it smell really good. Leave it to soak and then use a scrubby brush to properly get in there. You could put some washing up liquid on the toilet brush and really get in there and scrub it all off and that will make your toilet sparkling clean alongside a bathroom spray. So let's get cleaning the bathroom. I'm excited for this because it's looking a bit gross. So much better. I've just popped that there because I've got a bit of water on it, so it needs to dry. And in a minute, I'll hoover and mop. But yeah, looking lovely. I'm also gonna put that in the wash to change over. <laughs> Time to change the bed. I actually get a lot of questions about my bed linen and in particular the fluffy pillows that I use which are an eco-friendly alternative and vegan alternative to down feather. If you were to hold this or look at this you would assume that this is feather, it's not, it's called eco cluster and it's made from recycled plastic bottles, I think that they make them into a sort of fluffy texture. 
I would love to actually <laughs> open them up, but obviously that would be quite an expensive, wasteful thing to do. Um, but they are so fluffy and squishy and I love them. I'll leave a link to them. And I also got the bed linen from them. It's like um, just nice cotton bed linen. It's very soft. I also have linen bed linen. Hello, Roxy. No, no, I'm just filming a video, good girl. And this is from a company called Piglet in the Bed or Piglet in Bed, Pig in Bed, something like that. And they're lovely too, another sort of really, really lovely eco-friendly ethical brand. And I chose both these companies because they are based in Britain. So if you wanna try and find some bed linen that are more eco-friendly or ethical, just try and find a company that's local to you. If that particular thing is hard to find ethically and sustainably, a lot of the time with eco-friendly, ethical, sustainable, etc., there's lots of marketing going on. And the simplest thing you can do is just go and support a local business. I always like to open windows when I make beds just to let lots of fresh air in so that you're not keeping everything all cooped up and getting mouldy and just gross. Always open the windows every day. Bed making time. And this mattress is worth noting too. I know it's nothing to do with cleaning, but I thought you might be interested. It's made from eco-friendly materials. So I think there's a lot of pla recycled plastic bottles involved, uh, a lot less water. It's from Silent Night. Uh, I'll leave a link to it down below so you can read up more about why it's much better for the environment because mattresses typically are horrendous for the environment because of how difficult they are to um, make because of the amount of resources used in mattresses. So if you can get one that has some recycled ingredients, ingredients, <laughs> has some recycled elements to them, then that's really positive. And this was also on the more affordable scale because I did look for eco-friendly mattresses and a lot of them were very expensive and also had animal products in them. So they had feathers or horse hair. This one is vegan and eco-friendly. So it hit the mark and it also fit in our budget. And look how plump it is so huge. Anyone else's dog do this every time they make the bed? She always lies on the laundry or the duvet or whatever. Is that comfortable? Is that your new bed? This mirror really needs a clean. So I'm gonna just literally use the bathroom spray because this is vinegar and water. If you wanna make your own mirror spray specifically, I have a recipe and you wanna use less vinegar, but I'm not gonna use much. I'm literally gonna, it's really low. <laughs> There's barely anything in here. That's all I'm gonna do. I think when it comes to mirrors, you really don't wanna to put too much on them because then it can leave marks. The best bet is to use less product and just give it a good old polish. And the same goes for windows, any glass. This is also another thing I do, which maybe that's strange, but I'll use like the dirty towel. This is not that dirty, it's only been in the bathroom for a week, um, but it just saves me using a separate cloth and having to wash that as well. I actually have completely run out now, so I'm gonna refill it and show you. I mean, don't need to show you because it's very simple, but we've got our bathroom here, got some distilled vinegar. I'm gonna fill it about halfway. I'm just gonna finish this vinegar, to be honest. You don't need to measure it or be fussy about it. Um, but I do have measurements, like I said, in my blog post, if you wanna be more precise and have like separate cleaners for different rooms. But I tend to be aware of how much to use for each room. So like I said, I won't use too much. If I'm using this on a window or a glass surface, I just spray it from afar so it gets everything. 
And then if I'm using it on a toilet, I'd probably use a little bit more. Last job of the day is the living room. I'm gonna hoover in here. Um, I'm also gonna hoover the hallway and mop it, but that's afterwards. But I'm also going to dust and polish the furniture in here. We've got lots of wood surfaces in this room and they get very dusty because we have a wood burner. They literally get dusty within a few days. So this is on the blog post. It's olive oil, white, wood, white vinegar, and some lemon juice. Gives your um, furniture a bit of sheen don't overuse anything like this um i'm just going to use this to dust it and then a teeny tiny bit and just give it a little polish is now lovely and clean and i hope you enjoyed cleaning with me let me know if you enjoyed this video and i will do another one because there's other cleaning hacks that i have for example cleaning my oven or microwave or i can go into more detail about other things just let me know i'm happy to do this again because if it's interesting to you then it's quite a fun video for me and i hope you have a lovely day give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed and for more content like this give me your requests it's a new year. I'd love to hear your requests and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.